Hello and welcome back to the Airborne Lawyer YouTube channel. And today you find me in beautiful California at the International Airport in San Francisco. And I'm going to be flying the Boeing 777-300ER yeah, that we can see just down here at the gate all the way back up one to right London traffic. Heathrow. It's going to be about a 10 hour long haul flight all the way back uh, to London across the Atlantic. and. Uh, what a fantastic plane to do it in. It's a while since I've taken the 777-300 out. It's a while since I've done a flight sim feature length episode as well here on the channel. So it felt like time to, uh, to get back into the cockpit of this fine looking plane. Recently invested in the Flight Beam Studio software for San Francisco and I'm absolutely delighted with how this is all looking. And this is actually my first departure from San Francisco since getting the software. So let's take a look at today's route and it's actually quite an interesting one because we are not flying the way I would usually expect to fly back from San Francisco we're going pretty much across the Midwest we're going to go very near to Chicago or just the north of Chicago kind of Milwaukee area and then out near Toronto and Montreal and then taking a more southerly track between uh, Newfoundland and Labrador and uh, the south of Ireland we're then going to be coming in over South Wales and we are currently expecting to land on 09 left. That is certainly the direction the winds are blowing in right now in London. Obviously the landing is several hours away right now, so we uh, will check up on the weather as we get closer in. Looking also at our departure, so we're uh, gonna be flying the Night 3 departure, the Tipra transition uh, out of uh, runway zero one right and that means we'll be taking off and then turning to the left and heading up to the north end of San Francisco Bay and then we'll be turning to the right heading out towards Tipra and then we'll continue as filed. So it's going to be a long flight but we've got 90,000 kilograms of fuel on board with which to do it and the plane here is now pretty much loaded up and ready to push back. Okay, so let's just jump back in the cockpit and catch up on uh, on where we are. We're just about to do our pre-departure checklists. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see in the AFB that we've done our performance calculations for takeoff. So we're taking off from runway zero, zero 01 right. The weather is dry and mild, 11 degrees, and uh, the wind is coming straight down the runway at six knots. Now that gives us a VT speed of 168 knots. We're doing a derated takeoff minus one uh, takeoff today with flaps set to 15 degrees. I put all of that over here into the FMC and that is going to give us takeoff trim of 5.25. So I'm just going to uh, set that now on the flight control page. So. Stabilizer trim set at 5.25. Elsewhere, we have got uh, the route all planned in. We are going to be flying uh, the Night 3 departure uh, today out of runway 01 right, and that will take us out to Tipra and then on. Uh, with our route as filed. We've got uh, an initial cruise altitude of flight level 330. I've got the runway heading set up here on the MCP and what I can also now just do is set 168 knots into the MCP as well. That's our V2 speed. The flight directors are on, the auto throttles are armed, auto brakes are set to RTO, parking brakes still on, we've got Unicom tuned at the moment, there are no Control is on uh, on VATSIM. Our transponder is on. Looking at the overhead, the adderies are obviously all on and we've got most of our electrics on, but what we're now going to do is get the APU started. Window heat's all on, emergency lights are on, hydraulics are on, seatbelt signs are on, fuel pumps are all on, the packs are on, and we've currently got the nav lights on. So we are pretty much ready to push back now. So pre-flight checklist, well, we can double check the oxygen 
canisters. One there. One there. And for good luck, one there. And one there as well. So they're all working, so I can give those a tick. The flight instruments are all reading correctly. We have the runway heading set in the MCP and our intra cruise altitude also in the MCP. So I'm going to tick that. Parking brake is currently set. Fuel control switches are at cutoff. So flight deck door, that is closed, but I always take this opportunity to close all the other doors as well. So I'm just going to close all the doors. and then arm all of the doors as well. Back to the checklist. So I'm going to tick the door. Uh, yeah, so V2, heading and altitude all in the MCP. Takeoff speeds we have calculated. V1 of 155, rotate speed of 161, and V2 speed of 168. The CDU pre-flight is complete. We have set our stabiliser trim already and uh, we will take a look at the taxi chart as well just taking a quick look there it's going to be mic 2 to holding point mic 1 then we'll cross runway 1 left and then we'll hold for one runway 1 right that is such a tongue twister right so uh, not a very complicated taxi route out at all and it'll be nice and quick sometimes obviously at San Francisco it's a bit more complicated because you've got to get out to 28 left or 28 right, which involves uh, uh, crossing over a couple of runways and, uh, and uh, a number, uh, a lot more taxiways as well. So taxi and takeoff briefing is now all sorted, and we're now going to turn on the beacon. Meanwhile, outside we can undock the two jetways. And whilst the jetways are going back, I will call out uh, the pushback truck. So jetways are back, here comes the pushback truck, we'll just wait for him to connect. Okay, so away we go. And I am now going to start engine number two. You can hear the air conditioning packs ease back. And with the tiniest amount of N1, I will now Flick over the fuel control switch and inject some fuel into engine two. Not an enormous amount of space to uh, manoeuvre around in in this part of San Francisco International Airport. When I've flown to San Francisco in real life, this is the only part of the airport I've ever been into because this is well certainly when I last went this is where British Airways and Virgin Atlantic fly to and it's tucked right in the corner right next to the uh, I think it's the highway 101 over there and then you squeeze through the gap and into the main area of the airport in the corner near runways 0, 1 left and 0, 1 right. On the way into San Francisco, on this occasion, I actually landed on runway 19 left, which is unusual. Normally I do come in on the 2 8s, uh, but not this time. But of course, the biggest rarity at San Francisco is landing on the zero ones. That means you come in right over the hills in front of us, so it involves quite a tight turn into the airport. I've never done it, but I gather it is quite challenging. Okay, so pop the parking brakes on. Engine number two is now started, so we'll get engine number one underway. And I will confirm good engine start. Slightly prematurely, but I think I have a good feeling about engine one starting. Uh, 
take off for F page on FMC on the left hand FMC root legs page on the right hand FMC not sure how you do it but that's my standard approach when I'm about to depart United Day 53 radio check Really five, uh, 5 by 5 Thank you so much And I also heard the dog in the background OK, so whilst engine 2 is powering up let's do the flight control checks so rudder to the right, rudder to the left ailerons down and up sorry, elevators down and up and then ailerons to the left and ailerons to the right Spoilers. Trim we have already set and we are going to be taking off today with 15 degrees of flap. Okay, so let's see how we stand on the before taxi te uh, checklist now. So anti-ice is set to automatic, except for wing, which is on for some reason. Just double check those. Yes, they are all on auto. Recall. Uh, we have checked and it's all clear, but we are now going to turn off the APU. Put that into cooldown mode. Auto, brake, auto brakes are set to RTO for takeoff. Flight controls we have checked, and ground equipment is very nearly clear, so we're going to check that as well. Before takeoff checklist is the next one but I note that we've already completed that having set our flaps to 15. Just also double checking in my navigation display that on the left hand side I have got uh, traffic on TCAS and the weather. Uh, the traffic, Air Canada 574 turning the final runway to the eight left. Uh, sorry, so I've got the uh, weather display and the traffic on the left hand navigation display, and I've got a terrain display on the right hand navigation display. And that's normally how I do it. So, with the ground equipment clear, let's turn on the taxi lights. Parking brakes can go off, and I'll just announce my intentions on Unicorn. San Francisco traffic, speedbird 284 Heavy, is taxiing to the holding point for runway 1 left via mic 2. San Francisco traffic. So it does feel like you go quite close to this fence. You have got full wing clearance. If you go behind, you can see you've got full wing clearance, but it does look like you're going quite close. But when I have been to San Francisco in real life, I've been in a couple of 747s and also in a 777. And whilst waiting for those flights, I've also seen various supersized aircraft making their way round the bend here into the uh, corner of the airport which we've just emerged from. I know that Cathay Pacific also had a 747 round there last time I was there, which is a little while ago now. Put it this way, I was there long enough ago that there was a KLM MD-11 parked up at the gate. So this taxiway that we're just turning on to now should now be Mike 2 and we're just going to follow this up to the end. Well, it's certainly Mike, so I might have misread the chart slightly there. I'm just going to enjoy that warm California sun coming through the cockpit windows on the right hand side there because back in real life I know that uh, I'm not going to see very much of that when I get back to the UK.
So this is holding point mic for runway one left. So what I'm now going to do is just announce that I'm crossing one left. San Francisco traffic, speedbird 284 heavy, crossing one left at holding point mic. San Francisco traffic. So while since I've flown the 777-300, and the first thing I notice is how much heavier it is, just to get it to break away on taxi. Approaching zero one right and San Francisco traffic speed but two eight four heavy lining up runway one right San Francisco traffic and San Francisco traffic Air Canada five seven four five mile final runway two eight left San Francisco traffic also traffic southwest twenty seven thirty one short final three zero Oakland. Air cameras are on uh, five mile final. We'll, uh, we'll give runway. way to you, we'll hold Zero, short. One, right. So we're going to watch this Air Canada come in. He's only five miles out, so just to be on the safe side. Get the landing lights on and the strobes and the wing lights as well. So we are now completely ready to go. As soon as we see the aircraft on final, coming to land. So. He's landing on either 28 left or 28 right, I forget which. And that will therefore be out on the peninsula, we can see just over there. San Francisco is unusual in the fact that it has uh, two runways which cross over each other. For a major international airport which handles the amount of traffic that San Francisco does, it's almost unheard of. And they very often have uh, traffic crossing over each other. It's not unusual to see the 28s and the 01s in operation uh, at the same time. Runway, zero, one, so probably right. exercise an abundance runway, of caution zero, here, but one, right. better safe than sorry. And we can now just about see the Air Canada coming in there, I think now. There he is. Nice reflection on the water there. On runway zero one right. On runway zero one right. The RAS system getting a little bit excited there. So there it goes, right in front of us. San Francisco traffic speed but two eight four heavy taking off zero one right. And we are flying a night three departure. On runway San Francisco zero traffic. one right. On runway zero one right. So N one two fifty percent there or thereabouts. And then we'll set takeoff power. First speed alive. Okay, takeoff power set. 80 knots. 80 knots.
San Francisco traffic sweeper 284 heavy is clear of runway 01 right. Uh, climbing through 2,200 feet, San Francisco traffic. San Francisco traffic, United States, three folding short runway 10 right. Flaps one. Quite a hazy day out there. Is crossing runway Tenere. This is usually the point at which you might get a few views of the Bay Area and the bridge and so on. Golden Gate Bridge. So it's just traffic, South West 52, 52, pushing back from Gate 3. Looks like the cloud is a little bit too low today. Flaps now up. Traffic in there, they can free from lining up on the 10 left. And that completes the off takeoff checklist. So I've already engaged LNAV, which is putting us on our uh, planned departure route for night three departure. Ah, oh, there, you can see a bit of the uh, city now. Very nice. There's the Golden Gate Bridge. So you can see Alcatraz down there. You get a nice view of South Salito in the distance. And Golden Gate Park as well. Such a wonderful city. I hope to go back very soon in real life again. I think we're going to lose it in clouds now. So a bit of turbulence. I'm not going to turn off the, uh, the seagull signs just yet. Interesting kind of windy route, this actually. Uh, I assume it may have something to do with the location of Oakland International. Now, I don't know if we can see Oakland, but uh, it's hidden by cloud. But Oakland is another major airport very close to San Francisco. And I think that the route we've taken here, so winding off to the left and then back to the right, is probably designed to avoid us conflicting with traffic. Uh, taking off and landing at, uh, at Oakland. So now above 10,000 feet, so the landing lights are off. I'm just uh, going to turn off the wing lights as well whilst we're at it. I'm going to now switch over to VNAV, which will give us uh, a chance to get a bit of speed up. And that is us then on our way to London Heathrow. So this is an overnight flight. And I will spare you uh, the nine 
or so hours which we're going to be in the air making our way back to London Heathrow and instead leave you to enjoy a little bit of cinematics of the aircraft and of California which we're leaving behind us and I will then speak to you in a few minutes time when we are on our approach into Heathrow. I was on a plane to California I had all the time I'd ever need Did you even know I was looking for you? I think that I was hiding in between How long, how long, how long Did you wait for me? How long, how long, how long Did you really need South Wales. We're now at flight level 370 and we are just about to begin our descent into London Heathrow via the Bedeck One Hotel arrival. We have got uh, just 10 miles to go before top of descent and you can see here over on the ICAS we've got an FMC message to, rese uh, to reset the MCP altitude which we're going to do. We're going to set that to Flight level 140 for reasons which we'll go through in just a moment as soon as the descent has begun. And I'm just going to flick on the seatbelt signs as well. So earlier on in the flight I lamented leaving behind the warm sun of California and uh, actually of course it was quite cloudy when we were leaving San Francisco. It's less cloudy here in the UK, it's fairly clear and bright. In real life there is a fairly thick frost on the ground this morning. But uh, So the weather's actually a little better than I expected it to be, however, it is going to be cold. Minus one on the ground at Heathrow right now. We'll have a look at what the weather's doing uh, at the airport very shortly. So now just a mile to top of descent and looking for VNAV to capture the descent profile which it is now doing. You see the speed pulling, oh, uh, the power pulling back now. Now it's starting to drop and away we go. Now what I'm looking for here on the navigation display is for the green line to indicate I'm going to be levelling off at flight level 140 around about Bedeck. If I just enlarge that a little bit you can see that. There is Bedeck and yes the green line it's roughly around Bedeck when we're going to reach flight level 140 and the reason for that is all to do with our approach plate that we're using today. So we are flying the Bedeck One Hotel arrival. Very, very straightforward. We just follow the line in 
we need to be at flight level 140 at the deck and then we need to be at flight level 70 at the point we reach Ockham. Ockham is the southwest holding stamp before London Heathrow. Not expecting to hold this morning. I am on VATSIM, there are no controllers online, however, and it's all fairly quiet at the moment. But nonetheless, down to flight level 70 by the time we get to Ockham. What we're then going to do is loop background. We're landing on 09 left this morning, we're expecting 09 left. Uh, given the wind direction, so we're going to loop back round and head west and then do our base leg and come into 09 left. And a quick look at the approach plate for 09 left. Uh, a few things to pick up on here. So we've got a minimum descent altitude of 279 feet. We will need to be at 2,500 feet once we're established on the localizer from seven and a half miles from the runway. And the missed approach procedure is that we climb straight ahead and when we pass the later of 1,580 feet or zero miles from the 09 left localizer, we need to turn left to 036 degrees and climb to 3,000 feet. So that's our approach in a nutshell. And what we're going to do is just make sure that we've got that uh, minimum descent altitude set into the primary flight display. So it was 279 feet. And I'm just going to put that in here. So having looked at the approach, let's take a look at uh, the weather. And currently it's minus one, as I say, at Heathrow. And we have um, light winds of six knots coming in at 100 degrees. So that is why we are landing on 09 left. The conditions are otherwise quite clear. QNH is 1021. So what I'm just going to do is down to the electronic flight bag down here, bring up the landing and just put that in. So the winds are 100 at 6, outside air temperature is minus 1 and QNH 1021. We're going to do a full flaps 30 landing. We will have the air conditioning and the uh, anti-ice on auto. And let's see what that comes up with. That suggests a, a VREF of 155, which sounds quite, quite fast. Just going to pop that in over here. Interestingly, uh, the Approach ref page on the FMC suggests a much lower VREF of 139. What I'm going to do is actually go with the FMC, but I will add five knots to um, to that VREF. So it'll be 30 degrees of flap at 144 knots. I said it before on other flights and feature length episodes that I've recorded. I'm not quite sure why the EFB and the FMC can calculate quite different um, uh, 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 VREFs and takeoff speeds and so on. Takeoff speeds are normally around about the same, but it can be quite different when it comes to VREF. And I've had it before where the EFB calculates uh, VREF, which is significantly higher than what the FMC comes out with. So we're well on our way down now at uh, flight level 260. And breaking news, uh, Heathrow Tower has come online on uh, 118.5. So I'm going to tune that in 
to my radio so I can switch over. I'm still on Unicom at the moment, but I'll tune that in so that I can give them a call once I'm on final approach. Nation Echo. Time 0920 Zulu. Automatic. Arrival runway 09 left, departure runway 09 right, transition level flight level 70, surface wind 080 degrees 3 knots, visibility 10 kilometers, or more no cloud detected, temperature 0, dew point minus 2, QNH 1021. Acknowledge receipt of information echo, and report aircraft type and current QNH on first contact with Heathrow. With the tower being online, that also means we have some ATIS, which is very slightly different to what we were expecting. So actually, the winds are 080 at 3, so pretty much no winds at all. The temperature is now 0 degrees centigrade. QNH is still 102. check again on the navigation display and you can now see that that green circular line is bang on the deck so we are going to hit flight of 140 at exactly the right point where we should do I do have weather radar on given it's the middle of winter no particular concerns here about these clouds but, uh, just in case Double checking also, we do have anti ice on automatic. Which, uh, it's just a safeguard in case there's icing going on. Something else to just take a look at on the approach plate is the missed approach procedure. So we need to climb straight ahead from 9 left and when passing at the later of 1580 feet or naught zero miles from uh, the 09 left localizer, we then turn left to 036 degrees climbing up to 3,000 and then as directed. Hopefully it won't need to get missed, but uh, just, just committing that missed approach procedure to memory just in case I need to. Right now on VATScope, the app I use to check out what traffic is flying into and out of Heathrow on VATSIM, it actually looks like we are the closest aircraft but one uh, into the, uh, which is arriving into Heathrow. There is one aircraft which is now very close to landing, so it should be, uh, should be pretty straightforward here. Going through Flight 180, going to switch on the wing lights. And what we should also do at this point is put checklist. So, descent. Let's uh, hit the recall button. It's all clear, I guess. So, notes we've had a decent look over the, uh, the various charts that we're using. Uh, so, I'll check that. Auto brakes I'll have on one. And landing data. So, we've sorted the VRF. We're going to do 30 degree flaps landing uh, at 144 knots and our minimums will be 279 feet and 
approach briefing is now complete. The next page is the approach checklist, which needs the altimeters to be switched over from standard temperature and pressure, and uh, sorry, standard pressure, and that will happen once we go through transition level, which as we heard on the ATIS a little while ago, is currently 7,000 feet. So just looking up there towards the Cotswolds in Oxfordshire. Very nice. In real life the Bedeck One Hotel arrival is a busy one at this time of day because you've got a lot of the overnight flights coming in from uh, from the US so things get very busy coming into Ockham and also coming into Bovingdon which is the northwest hold. I was actually quite surprised at, at our route it's, it's, it's been fairly well it's, it's, it's been on quite a sort of southerly course. Often when you're coming back from San Francisco to London you'd expect to go pretty much up towards Greenland and down um, down that way. Coming in over Liverpool, Manchester type, type area and then down the centre of the UK. That would take you uh, and instead this time we've tracked quite a southerly route and we've come in over South Wales. So, uh, we've now hit flight level 140, I'm now going to set flight level 70 in the FMC and continue that descent. Six miles west of Heathrow right now, so we're right over Reading, I'd imagine. Altimeter setting. Don't say we can see anything, but yes, I think. I think the city of Reading is just uh, just over to our left hand side there. What I'm also just doing is keeping an eye on any other traffic that is in the area. So we uh, have another British Airways flight, which is just lining up another 7 actually, which is just lining up on finals. You can't see it on TCAS in the navigation display, but he's going to be over there somewhere. And just lining up to final approach. In addition, something that we can see on TCAS is an aircraft which is climbing out of Heathrow. And we're going to steer well clear of him, I think. He's already climbing above us, so no real concern. So that's an Air Canada flight. Heading yeah, the direction. And there is that sweeper that we mentioned a few minutes ago. And a 12 mile final into Zero now.
Altimeter setting. So, coming up on 10,000 feet, so I will uh, turn on the landing light at this stage. I can't seven. see the airport on Prepare 3D uh, V5. There are some really good effects with atmospheric haze, so we can't see very much over there. But in the interest of realism, I prefer that to what it used to be like on old versions of Flight Sim, where you, know, you just see everything and anything. There was there was no haze at all. An FMC message saying that we need some drag, so I'm just going to help slow the plane up with a little bit of speed brake. Still pretty much on the descent profile, so uh, no real concerns there. Altimeter setting. The altimeter setting warning is telling us that we need to switch over to local pressure, which we will do once we are through transition at 7,000 feet. So, uh, as we looked at on the approach chart, it's going to be quite a tight series of turns once we get uh, past Ockham. Got ten miles to go. But what I'm just going to do now is switch over actually to flight level change mode and slow the plane right down. Just extending full speed brake now. So that we are at a better speed to go into those turns. Altimeter setting. Going through minimum clean, so I'm putting out one degree of flap. And on the heading, I'm going to the one eight four two zero to identify. Left to zero nine zero degrees. Sorry, <laughs> left to two seven zero degrees. But just to ensure that we actually uh, turn to the left, I will uh, turn to select 290 degrees and then once we're on the left hand turn we'll select 270 ok so here is flight level 70 7000 feet I am now going to switch over to local pressure 1021 now just 3 miles from Ockham now going nice and slowly ready to go into those turns because you can see some lakes over there, some reservoirs. Uh, they are right alongside Heathrow Airport. I can't really see the airport just yet, but it's it's right alongside them. So we've got to do this kind of S shape series of turns to establish onto final. So we don't have an awful lot of distance to do that when we're still travelling at about 200 miles an hour. So one mile now from Ockham and I am going to hit the heading select button and turn 180 degrees and head back in the direction that we've come from. This creates effectively a downwind leg. We'll then do a right base uh, to establish. 
East Road traffic, speedbird 284 is overhead Ockham, turning uh, left 290 degrees, the downwind leg, and then right base for 09 left, will report established 09 left, East Road traffic. going to take us down to 4,000 feet. Approach checklist is now complete. We've switched the altimeters to local pressure, and we can now get the landing checklist ready. We will complete that when we are on final approach. So we are now the next aircraft to land at Heathrow. There's nothing else in front of us. I will still report established on Incom. And as soon as I've done that, I'll switch over to the tower to obtain my landing clearance. Five thousand feet. Thousand to go. Although actually given where we are. Let's just select three thousand now and keep that descent going. southwest of London right now. For anyone who's familiar with the area, kind of very near Farnborough. Around the area where the A3 heads down towards Portsmouth. Okay, time to turn onto our base leg now, so I'm going to just select 360 degrees, so heading directly north and now looking to establish on the local Point of traffic jet B67, radio check. B505. Thank you. Uh, JetBlue 67 is on the Amit 1G rival for from zero eight right into Gatwick, currently five thousand for three thousand about to intercept the equalizer Iowa terminal zero eight right. Okay, he's going into Gatwick. Uh, in the meantime, 
just reducing the speed now to 180 knots and down to 2,500 feet. No particular urgency here, we are below the glide slope at this stage. Just uh, getting ourselves nicely prepared for a final approach. to 045 to intercept localizer, which is going to happen any minute now. Here it comes. Just going to switch on approach hold so that we capture the localizer. And we are now just just over 11 miles out. Heathrow traffic speed by 284, establishing 09 left, and we are 11 miles out. Heathrow traffic. And I'll now switch to the tower. Version 3, November, Roma 09 right, clear for takeoff, wind 030 degrees 3 knots. Good takeoff, Roma 09 right, version 3 November. Heathrow tower, good morning, speed by 284, with you inbound ILS 09. Seabird 284, Heathrow Tower, runway 09 left, clear to land, wind 090 degrees 3 knots. Clear to land, 09 left, Seabird 284. Shuttle 8 Golf, Unicom 122, decimal 8, bye bye. 122, decimal 8, thank for the service, see you again sometime, shall I go? So I'm going to do 160 knots until we're four miles out. We've got our landing clearance. So starting now to work through the uh, landing checklist. And we need to arm the speed brakes. Set flaps to 30 and get the landing gear down. So, we will do, uh, do the gear and flaps shortly. I'm just going to keep the speed up for the moment, Traffic. keep us going. Traffic. And I don't think there's actually anything to be concerned about there with that TCAS alert. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep the speed up until we're at four miles out and then I will slow the plane right down to our VREF of 144 and get the flaps out to 30 degrees. Now we can put the gear down now. We're at just 1,900 feet. I think we're just starting to get the airport come into sight now. Okay, five miles. Here are the reservoirs that we could see a little while ago. We're heading towards Ockham. And pretty much on four miles now, so I'm going to pull the speed back to our VREF of 144 and I'm going to disengage the autopilots. Version 3 November, modest Unicom 122, decimal 8, bye bye. Forgo, have a great day, version 3 November. Right. 1000. Ready for pushback and start. Scandinavian, so Smith. Scandinavian 778, push it out approved, face south. Push it out approved, facing south. Scandinavian, so Smith. So I have control of the aircraft now. Just getting the flaps out. 25 degrees now and 30 degrees. Approaching zero Selected. nine left. Scarcely any wind. Nothing is actually registering at the moment. A little bit 
below our VREF, but you kind of get a feeling sometimes. Oh. Obviously, we added five knots to the VREF. The aircraft is quite comfortable coming in at 300. A little bit below, 141 or so. 50 above. 200. Decide. We are going to land. So we're coming in a little bit shallow at this point. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Kalem 533, at stand 563. Request IFA clears the Copenhagen. Kalem 533, Heathrow Tower, cleared Copenhagen, Brookmans Park, 6 Juliet departure, Skork 7505. Can you please repeat the message for me, uh, Kalem 533? Uh, I'll send you the text. Yes, please, uh, Kalem 533. Okay, so that landing was a bit shallow, but we've got the plane down safely nonetheless. Clear the Cuba again via uh, Bravo uh, BP, BPK 6 Juliet departure, Scope 7505, QNH 1021, uh, KLM 5CC. KLM 5CC, that's correct. Steve 284, right Alpha, Delta, sound 566. Right Alpha, Delta 566, thanks very much, Steve 284. KLM 533, the information is Foxtrot and the QNH 1021. Information Foxtrot, QNH 1021, KLM 566. That's correct. So let's just set, select uh, 566 six in this list. Uh, can't seem to get 566, six. we'll take 572 instead. It's obviously very quiet right now. So yeah, the landing was too shallow there, unfortunately. A couple of reasons for that. One, I've not flown the 777-300 in a little while. You'll see on the channel that it's a while since I've done a flight in feature length. And uh, just a little bit out of practice. In addition, for some reason, my keyboard is steadfastly, steadfastly refusing to work right now. So there are a few bits and pieces. You might have noticed when I said I was going to disengage the autopilot, it took unusually long. That's because I normally disengage by hitting Shift and Z but it just wasn't doing anything, so I ended up uh, having to uh, drop down the AP disengage bar in the centre of the MCP. So not ideal, and that kind of thing can kind of distract you, and particularly when you're flying the plane on your own, it just makes it a lot harder all of a sudden. However, we got the plane down safely just a little bit before the desired touchdown zone. Just goes to show once again, how every flight is different and there are always some challenges which you have to overcome. Technical, meteorological, anything really can, uh, can make it suddenly a lot more difficult. And even though you've done it dozens of times before, you suddenly start making some basic errors. So we have switched on the APU, so that should be powering up now. And here is Delta. So we're going to turn left into this taxiway.
and I am going to see if I can pull into 566 after all. I should still be able to get the jetway to work. And I might be able to persuade GSX to, uh, to provide ground services at the gate. I have said this before on some of my YouTube videos, but whenever there's a controller on Vatsim who assigns me a gate at Heathrow or Gatwick or wherever I'm going, it's almost invariably the case the gate that I'm assigned is not listed on GSX. So here we are, here is stand 566. Ready for taxi. Oh, no, sorry, that's Scan the Navy on Sonic. Scan the Navy on 778, taxi right on Alpha, hold November Brother 10. Here is 566, so let's. Taxi right on Alpha, hold on. Uh, uh, Bravo November 0, scan the name of something. Okay, here for a tower, Ryanair 227. Uh, radio check, please. Run at 227, good morning, readability 5. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Run at 227, it's time. Bravo 738, it's stand 416 with information from Foxtrot on board. Uh, requesting IFR to Echo Delta, Delta Foxtrot. Run at 227, cleared Echo Delta, Delta Foxtrot, by the Detling 1 Juliet departure. Squawk, um, standby. Squawk cool. so is coming up, 4225. Engines can go off. And seatbelts can go off. So here we are, safely arrived at Heathrow, all the way from San Francisco, California, in the 777-300ER. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, look out for more short and long-haul flying here on the channel. And also look out for further episodes of the TVM 930 World Tour on MSFS 2020, which I'll be uploading very soon as well. I'll speak to you very soon, and have a great Christmas.